We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers, and I am the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I am very excited to welcome our next guest on the interview series, Donald Walker. He is the Chief Operating Officer at DC Green Bank. Donald, thank you so much for being here. If you want to share a little bit about yourself for our listeners, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how exactly you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Absolutely. And thank you so much, Christina, for having me. I'm really excited to talk about um, this topic and how we reimagine company culture. And um, here at DC Green Bank, um, we are really thinking about different ways to be able to help to push um, the industry forward, um, especially in the financial services industry, which seems to be pretty traditional, um, but really thinking about how can we be a little bit more advantageous and people-centered um, in order to be able to create uh, more equity and inclusion across the board. Um, and so, um, like you said, my name is Donald Walker. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at DC Green Bank. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, and uh, just a little bit of background, um, I spent um, about 15 years working in the higher education sector, um, specifically in the administration and student affairs side, um, where a lot of my work overlapped with human resources, um, operations management, um, and a, a lot of different things um, there. And so um, transitioned out of that in 20. Uh, it was 2017. Um, it was inauguration day. Um, and I, I remember that because I was saying one Donald out and another one in, in 2017, which is probably not a funny joke, but that's what I was saying that day. There you go. Um, and I transitioned um, into working for um, a couple of different staffing agencies, um, worked at Kelly Services for a little bit of time, and then over at Lucas Group. Um, and then the pandemic hit, needed to make some changes. Um, and then landed this really cool role over at DC Green Bank being, um, it started out as director of operations and then um, now the chief operating officer. I've been serving in this role probably since, I've been here for almost two years now, uh, but been in this role for a little over eight months. Um, and so in, in that role, I'm responsible for a lot of different things, including human resources, day-to-day uh, -day operations, strategic planning, um, IT, marketing and communications, government relations, a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> that kind of falls. I have a team working on that, those, um, most of that stuff I don't have to do all by myself, luckily. Um, but to answer your question, um, what did I want to be when I grew up? Um, there were a couple of things that stood out to me um, for a long time. I wanted to, um, I was really into like science and tech things. And so um, for a long time, I would go through, I, I wanted to be a mechanic because my mom was like, oh, you can always fix things. So I wanted to be a mechanic for a little bit of time. Um, and then after that, um, I went on, I don't remember what it was, but I went on a cruise one time um, and I wanted to be a cruise director because I was like, this seems cool. You get to like interact with a bunch of people and sail around the world and, and see a bunch of cool different things. So those were the two careers that popped into my head when you, when I saw that question. I love it. And you fast forward to today, you're COO at DC Green Bank, and it sounds like there's never a dull day that goes by a lot of different projects. If you had to narrow it down, what's one of the next problems or situations you're currently trying to solve or navigate? Yeah, so um, one of the really cool things about DC Green Bank is we are trying to, um, so we were established back in 2018 um, with some legislation um, by the mayor and DC council um, to be able to accelerate clean energy finance into the district. And so basically what that means um, is that we are um, positioned with, there's some money that's been set aside and, out, and allocated from the mayor's budget to be able to create the green bank, to create this revolving fund um, to be able to help with sustainability. So we, we think about um, putting solar panels on buildings, um, creating more um, energy efficient vehicles and places for them to charge. Um, and for um, when you think about different buildings that put out different exhausts and they're heated by gas and everything else, uh, being able to fix a lot of those things so that be things become more environmentally friendly. And I think um, for the most part, people understand what sustainability is, but there's a whole bunch of financing that has to go into that to be able to retrofit and kind of fix the things that are, exist. And so one of the biggest things that we are, are thinking about, and I think it's tied directly into our company culture in a lot of different ways too, is um, how do we advance 
this financing into low income um, and minority, majority, minority and underrepresented group neighborhoods. Um, because a lot of times when we talk about financial distribution across the, the globe, um, but specifically here in the United States, um, it's disproportionate that, um, you know, neighborhoods of, with people of color um, have been left behind, right? And so we're trying to bridge this financing gap because a lot of times they don't even qualify for financing because there's a lot of rules that are in place with commercial banking and things like that, that people just, if they weren't in that atmosphere before, they don't know how to navigate it. It can become difficult, burdensome, et cetera. So we're trying to bridge that financing gap and to be able to provide resources, not just to low and medium income, but they're a huge part of what we do, uh, but really thinking about how can we just advance clean energy. Um, but for those neighborhoods specifically, how do we do that in such a way when some of the basic needs aren't being met? So how do we get those basic needs met by doing it in a clean and sustainable way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are big questions to answer, a lot of moving parts. We love advancing clean energy and really making sure that it reaches folks as well. Uh, you mentioned that is ingrained in your company culture. I would imagine the folks that you work with are really drawn to this mission-driven, purpose-driven work. And I think that no matter what level you are in an organization, when you joined, everyone really uh, contributes to the, the culture of the organization when you're collaborating, yeah. working with with teams. Uh, but I do also think you have a unique role as well when you are a senior leader, when you are an executive to be a culture conduit from your perspective as a chief operating officer, what are qualitative and quantitative ways we can really think about measuring this dynamic thing of company culture? Absolutely. Um, and, and I think you, you said it the best, right? It has to start with the senior leaders of the organization to really believe in what you're doing and how you're doing it, because all of those things trickle down, no matter what you do, right? No matter if I say something, I can say what I want all day long. If I'm not doing it and I'm not living by it, um, then it, it it doesn't really help with the company culture at all. I'm actually, um, I'm an adjunct professor as well at Towson University. And it's something I talk to my classes about all the time is that you've got to live and breathe this stuff, um, especially when it comes down to company culture. Um, to get back to your question, though, when we when we talk about qualitative ways um, and some quantitative ways to be able to also measure and set the culture that you want, um, I think that it, it really starts with your company policies and procedures. Um, and so one of the things that we've done is we work with an outside consultant um, that specifically works in equity and inclusion um, to take a look at and create our employee handbook. Um, and in the employee handbook, it goes beyond just talking about policy, right? It talks also about um, what are we doing to make sure that people's benefits are where they need to be? Um, are we thinking about, um, you know, as we talk about, you know, healthcare benefits or um, parental benefits, everybody's situation looks different. So our parental policy or parental care policy or um, parental leave policy is, if you have a new child entering into your home and you are the primary caregiver for that kid, um, then you can take the same parental leave as if someone who is naturally giving birth. Um, and the reason for that is because everybody's family situation looks different and it's not ours to decide what someone's family looks like. Um, the same thing goes with our healthcare policy um, is that um, we don't define what people's families look like. We say, based on what your family looks like, you can have one other adult on that policy um, if, you, if that's what you choose to do um, and any of your legal dependents on that policy as well. Um, and you don't have to justify it to us. You don't have to do any of that. Um, and then we pay 80% of that for everybody that's on that policy because we wanna just make sure that we're uplifting people in the best way that we know how. Um, I think there, the, uh, there are some other tangible ways that, that we do that um, in order to be able to really create this employee culture that we want. And um, we just implemented a new summer flex policy for the summer so that everybody can have Fridays off. Um, if it is, or as long as they're getting all their work done, um, how, how can we be more flexible so that you have more time with your friends and family and other things that are important to you? Um, and then the, the one that I think is really, really important um, and it, it's just one of the ones that I think I'm most proud of is that we have, um, through our recruitment policy and how we recruit all of our employees, um, you know, salary is a big deal, right? Everybody wants to know how much money you make. And so um, we have committed to posting the salary with every single job that we have posted out in the world. 
Um, and even more advantageous, we decided that we are going to pay people the maximum amount that we can pay them in that pay band um, without having to do a negotiation. Reason being um, is that, you know, like I know that there's um, huge pay disparity between people of color and women specifically, right? And then if you're a woman of color, it's even more um, that you're getting paid 50 and 60 cents to the dollar right. um, compared to white men. Um, and so we said, we need to remove this negotiation piece out of our policy because um, all it is, is that if we can afford to pay for a specific job for what we're asking you to do, regardless of what you've done in the past, we want to compensate you for what we're asking you to do because you have the skill sets to be able to do it. And this whole like going back and forth and making people beg for money, it's just, there's a power dynamic that's created right from the beginning that doesn't need to be created. So we post it, we say, this is the maximum that we can give and we stick to it. Um, we don't always get it right. And I, and I think that it's important to say that, but I think that we're moving in the direction so that as we bring more employees on um, and we're thinking about how we create a culture of trust and understanding, it's a huge way to go is just say, if I know that I can pay you know, $80,000 for a position, I'm going to pay the $80,000 for that position and not make the person beg for money because all that's, that's what's happening when you're negotiating. It's like, they know that they can pay you this. And so, because we know that, let's just put that out there in the world and not make it more uncomfortable for people um, and compensate them appropriately. Yeah, mitigate those power dynamics as best we can. And I love that you pay people the maximum in that in that band as well, because you're right, there is a ton of research that shows that there are disparities there and there's a missed opportunity and it is the, the right thing to do. And I love the examples you gave in terms of uh, family leave and healthcare benefits this is so important, not only to the individual employee, but also their, their family, the community, um, and the people that, that they uh, kind of interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. And we know that this is something that employees, potential employees are asking for and almost expecting from uh, organizations, which is a, a shift over the past couple of years. We know that one uh, study showed that 60% of employees say it's important for their company to share in the caring for their families as well as communities, so not just right. them. Uh, how else is DC Green Bank uh, really thinking about the impact of uh, caring for and demonstrating care for that full team member as well, in addition to the examples you provided? Sure. So um, there's a couple different things um, because we we have to recognize that people come to work with all of themselves, right? And it's their whole self that's at work. Um, I think for a long time, culture or work culture was, you know, you act one way at work and you act a different way when you're not at work. Or, um, and those things are not interrelated and they just are, right? I think the, the human practice is that I mean, you, you have everything that's going on. And if, if nothing taught us this in the pandemic is... Um, we've got to be flexible and you're going to show up how you are and, and everything else. And so um, there's a couple of things that come to mind for me, especially um, with that. Um, number one, um, again, with our employee culture, um, we have some very specific statements and policies about how we treat one another um, and hold each other accountable to treating one another. Um, I think that um, people knowing that you're going to come to work and be treated with respect and that your opinions are valued. Um, and if we're not doing that, here's what you need to do and here's what you can do to be able to advocate for yourself is something that's really important. Um, and whether that's, um, we have a um, hotline where people can place an anonymous report. Um, most of those reports get routed to me or to my CEO, but they can also choose for those not to come to either one of us and it can go to an outside party who would conduct an investigation um, and, there are, um, there's a couple other things that we, we just think about as far as culture is concerned. Um, and, you know, people with kids, for example, it's not, if, especially if you're at home on a Zoom call, um, it's not uncommon even for our CEO to have like one of his kids strapped on um, in, in the middle of really important meetings, right? Like board meetings and things like that. And I think that it's showing the way that we want to be flexible and um, we also don't have a designated start time and a designated end time. And I realized that there's privilege that comes with that, right? Like, I think that because we're in an environment where we're serving and working with the community, sometimes we have to do things after hours or earlier, um, but it gives the team some flexibility to be able to deal with things that are going on in their lives. Um, we also have like a guilt-free um, PTO type 
deal, right? Um, in that number one, if you have to take off P PTO for any of your family events that might be going on, um, you don't have to explain it to anybody. You can simply put in a PTO request um, and then we will uh, approve those things for the most part. Um, sometimes we have some things, uh, in any situation, sometimes we got things that we, we can't avoid. Um, but for the most part, those things will be approved without any explanation. On the other hand, we also, um, we decided not to go with like an unlimited PTO policy because research shows that with those people tend to take off less. Um, but we have a policy in place where you can, you know, you earn 20, I think it's 21 days or 20 days of, of annual time per year. Um, but we also give personal days, we give civic engagement days, so you can go take care of community service or whatever else you might want to be involved in on your own. Um, but then also require a 10 hour, sorry, sustainability, the lights, <laughs> the, uh, we also require though that um, all of our employees take at least 10 days off per year so that they're making sure that they have that balance in their life as well. Um, so a lot of things forward thinking where it feels a little required sometimes, but I think that it helps us overall uh, because for people who just tend not to take off, they're like, we need to take off, a new quarter's coming, we haven't taken any time off yet. Please make sure that you build some of that in and being flexible about what, what that looks like. And so sometimes that means if people are traveling um, and they want to work some of the time and not work some of the time, they can work that out with their supervisor and IT and everything else. And so um, we start with the mantra of start with the answer being yes, and let's figure it out. And then if we end up at a no, we've already exhausted all of our yes options. I love that. I like coming to the table with start with the answer via yes and having kind of the, the abundance mindset as well to see how can we co-design and work with this together as well. That flexibility is so important. One of the things you brought up too was around that accountability piece as well. And we talked about this a little bit in terms of company culture and accountability from leaders. When you are thinking about kind of everyone at the organization, really thinking about equity driven leadership, how do you encourage folks no matter where they sit at DC Green Bank to really practice that in their processes, in their day to day, uh, and really be thinking about taking actions uh, tomorrow to create more equity. Yeah. Um, it, this is one of those, you've got to put your money where your mouth is type of deal, um, right? And so um, there, there's a couple of different things that we have put in place and continue and will continue to do to just make sure that we're putting equity um, and inclusion at the forefront of what we do. Um, number one for the residents of DC that we're serving. Um, and that has to be, um, and that's our mission and everything else. And so, but we have to think about that first and then think about ourselves and, and simultaneously, right? Like it's not that one is more important than the other. We have to think about those things together. Um, first and foremost, um, we have a, a pretty unique full-time position on our team um, called an equal access advocate. Um, and her role specifically is to make sure that as we review our policies and procedures, implement new practices, um, and also work with different organizations that are out in the community, that we are providing equal access, inclusion, um, and, and advocating for those who have less in every single thing that we do. Um, um, she, there's a line of communication internally as well where you can have confidential, or I shouldn't say confidential, but private conversations with her to be able to help to navigate some of the different pieces. Um, and um, she and I have a really good relationship so that if there's something that does need to be reported because someone feels like they don't have access to something, she can advocate for them um, and talk to me about it or work with that person to be able to come and talk with me or with the CEO about how can we advocate for a little bit more access here. Um, the other pieces to this, I think, that are that are incredibly important um, is, is just really practicing what we preach along the way. So if we have policies in place, how are we implementing them? Um, if we are supposed to be working with specific people, how do we work with them? Um, if we are going to create something new, does this include everyone? Um, and if it doesn't, how do we do some after action reporting to be able to quickly shift and change on a dime um, in order for us to be really successful moving forward? So um, it's just one of those things where I don't know that there's a hard answer for the question, but it's a, you have to be thinking about it all of the time and you have to be willing to move and flex and shift 
in order to make sure that your team is advocated for, that there is access to different things um, and be transparent about as much as you can. Um, I think in the world, people expect transparency, number one, but we should never violate anybody's privacy. And, and I think that sometimes people think that they're entitled to know something that's happening with someone else. I'm like, no, that violates that person's privacy. So we don't ever wanna do that, but let's be as transparent as we can and always think about transparency and then think about what are our policies, procedures, et cetera, that we can put in place in order for us to um, move forward. And, and sometimes it's having outside resources to check us on those things. And so we have an outside resource that's always that we're always talking about equity and inclusion with as well, um, that checks us on our stuff and makes sure that we're, we're doing the right thing. Absolutely. I think that iteration, that A-B testing, making sure you're hearing feedback, that continuous loop is really important, especially to this work, especially as you continue to add new team members and continue to have different conversations. And I think we've seen a lot of people, especially out of the need, need to innovate and within the challenges come opportunities. Are there any kind of things that you've seen in the people, human resources, culture, talent space, um, in terms of progressive initiatives you're excited by, the way that people are doing things differently and why? Yeah, um, I think that the pandemic has forced us into this remote culture, um, whether we like it or not, right? Um, and again, this comes from a place of privilege, and I think that it's important to note that um, as much as people are really enjoying the remote work, um, there's so many people who don't get that option. Um, and I think one of the things that I'm impressed with is, and this is probably controversial and most people may or may not agree with me, I'm impressed with people who are really coming up with cool hybrid work environments. I mean, the reason why I say the hybrid work environment and my team presses me on being able to work from home all the time, uh, but I think that coming into work, number one, helps with building culture uh, because the human interaction that people are able to have, um, not through, not virtually, I think is, especially with people that you might not know or new people, um, it helps to, it helps people to become more comfortable in environments, in, in my opinion. The other part, though, is that I think that it helps to support the economy in a lot of different ways for people who don't necessarily have the privilege to just have a job where they can work virtually. Um, but there are service providers and things like that that we would patronize a lot before coming into before the pandemic hit. And then those jobs were deeply affected by the pandemic. And I think that from an inclusion standpoint, organizations that are that are really trying to push the envelope and saying, yes, I understand, we really want to get you in the work and or you know, let you be remote and more flexible and things like that, which I think is really important. But also we still need to support our local economy because there are so many people who are still looking for work and trying to get back to work and everything else like that. But if that downtown district, if everybody in this building doesn't come to work anymore, all of the restaurants and services and everything else that were around that were up and thriving, those people are now displaced. And so um, that's one of the things that I think that organizations are starting to do that I think is a really cool and innovative way to do things, um, but still letting their employees be flexible. So like one of the things that we like, I mean, we come to work, you know, two days a week right now, um, but, but we split it up so that our team is in the office four days a week over the total period of time um, so that we can patronize local business. We can try to help things thrive a little bit better. Um, I also think anybody who is being transparent about salary and not making people negotiate and just paying people for the job that we're asking them to do rather than what your past paycheck looked like yes. um, is helping to close the gap. Um, and I'm glad to have led that initiative at DC Green Bank and that that's our commitment moving forward and thinking about, you know, how do we adjust over time and promote over time and try to make those things more transparent. Um, my team will laugh because they probably don't know this yet, but we are um, gonna put some more transparency pieces in place on how to get promoted and what you can get promoted to along the way, um, just to be able to make sure that um, we're doing that. The other, I'll say one last thing here too. Um, I think the most progressive policy that anybody can put in place is to admit when you're wrong or when you've messed up. Um, I think that there is power in being able to say, you know what, we didn't get that right. Um, 
and let's figure out how to fix it um, and being open to hearing that feedback and working on that together. Uh, but also know that if you give feedback, then that's what it is, right? It's feedback. And one of the hardest parts about these types of jobs is trying to make everybody happy um, and that, but there's feedback that's given. Um, and as long as you're taking that feedback in and not taking it personally, and then trying to figure out what you can do with your team to really help it progress, um, then I think that that's the type of place that um, is really being progressive in, in policies that I would always welcome and, and want to learn more about and follow. Absolutely, people wanna be paid for the work they're doing, they wanna be paid equitably and also grow within their career as well. So having those clear pathways is really important too. And again, setting people up for success, having the common framework and language to, to do so. Uh, we are in May, 2022, yay for us continuing keeping on. Uh, yes. I would love to ask how is DC Green Bank honoring and celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander uh, Heritage Month this year, recognizing that I'm sure you are uh, supporting and recognizing employees, API employees, uh, 365 days a year, but definitely want to ask uh, right now. Yeah, absolutely. Such a great question. Um, we prioritize, so um, one, another thing that our Equal Access Advocate really does really, really well um, and works with our comms team on a lot is really making sure that we are aware that these things are coming and when they're happening in, in real time and being able to create space um, for um, celebration, um, be able to create space, especially for people who are on our team that identify um, as Asian, um, Asian American and Pacific Islander, um, being able to create space to celebrate them, um, to celebrate their culture and learn more about them. Um, one of the things that we try to do every, we do it twice a week at least, um, is, is sharing in um, different team building activities virtually just for 15 minutes a day on every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, where every team member gets to lead it. And a lot of times this is where call outs about um, Asian Americans, um, History Month and Pacific Islanders um, are called out in that space. Um, and no matter what month it is, we try to make sure that we're calling out people, especially contributors to the clean energy space, uh, because I think that number one clean energy is just one of those things that um, is new and upcoming. And there are a lot of really good contributors. And so for us to really think about who are contributors from these different communities that are helping to contribute to that space. Um, and let's learn about them is, is a way that we, we celebrate internally. I love that. That education is so important and really relating it to the business and highlighting team members is also important, passing the mic as well. Donald, as we are ending our time together, is there anything that I didn't ask that you want to share with folks who are listening or maybe underscoring uh, a couple key insights from the many uh, different areas we talked about today? Yeah, no, um, I am just sincerely appreciative of, of what you all are doing and being able to um, bring culture and, and change of culture to the forefront of organizations and businesses across um, the world. Um, and I think that it's such a big deal that you're talking about it um, and that you're providing space for that to happen. And um, I, yeah, I just really appreciate that. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, make a plug for, uh, for clean energy and green banks specifically, um, specifically here in DC and how that can really help to affect change, especially for communities that have been left behind. And so um, anybody, especially anybody can always give us a call and work with us, but anybody specifically in the DC area would love to always chat and figure out how can we help um, get some financing on some really cool projects. I love that. I think that's a great call to action to, to end our conversation on as well. Donald, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture this afternoon. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for having me. Of course. And as a reminder for folks who are listening and all voices, we really believe in employees and employers being seen, heard, and understood. And we know it's a requirement for the company to really succeed overall. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. 